chambers. Sergeant Arms, please help clear the main floor, please. At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees please leave the main floor of the chambers and have a seat upstairs in the balcony? Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Madam Majority Leader, your presence is needed.
Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of July 23rd, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Ten-year-old Clifford Glover, I can't breathe. Amprey Samuel. Taman Robinson, I can't breathe. Ayala. Alberta Spreel, I can't breathe. Barron. Unarmed, innocent, Akai Gurley. I can't breathe. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Chin. Kamani Gray. I can't breathe. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Carnegie. Timothy Stansbury. I can't breathe. Present. Deutsch. Yeah. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Nicholas Hayward Jr., 13 years old, playing with a toy gun. I can't breathe. Eugene. Gibson. 23-year-old, West African immigrant from Guinea, Bronx resident, Amadou Diallo. I can't breathe. Jonai. Gredenchik. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Ramali Graham. I can't breathe. Ku. Present. Patrick Dorisman. I can't breathe. Kozlowitz. I also can't breathe. Lanceman. I can't breathe. Lander. In solidarity with my colleagues of color, I'm here. Levin. Nicholas Naquan Jr. Nic Nicholas Naquan Hayward Jr. I can't breathe. Levine. Standing in solidarity, I'm here as well. Lewis. 23 year old. Chantel Davis, East Flatbush, I can't breathe, here. Mizell. Menchaca. Peter Funches, I can't breathe, presente. Miller. 15-year-old Randolph Evans, Thanksgiving evening, 1976, I can't breathe. Moya, Perkins, David Booby Stringfellow, I can't breathe. Powers, joining my colleagues in solidarity, I'm here. Reynoso, Deborah Danner, I can't breathe. Richards, unarmed, 23 years old, father, would have been husband, um, my neighbor, November 2006, Far Rockaway, Sean Bell. I can't breathe. Rivera. Mohammed Ba, I can't breathe. Rodriguez. Yona Bumper, killed by the police October 29, 1984. I can't breathe. Rose. Eric Ghana, murdered five years ago. I can't breathe. 
I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Eric Garner. Rosenthal. Here as an ally. Maisel. Here. Moya. Anthony Baez. I can't breathe. Salamanca. Anthony Baez, 29 years old, killed playing football. I can't breathe. Torres. Luis Rodriguez. I can't breathe. Traeger. In solidarity with my colleagues here. Ulrich. Here. Ballone. Here. Van Bramer. In solidarity with my colleagues, I'm here. Jaeger. Here. Jonai. Here. Matteo. Combo. Sahid Vassal, 34 years old. I can't breathe. Present. Cohen. Here. Speaker Johnson. Uh, in solidarity, I'm here. We have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Jacqueline J. Lewis of Middle Collegiate Church, which is located at 50 East 7th Street in Manhattan. Good afternoon, everyone. Let us pray. Eternal God, we call upon you by many names. We call you Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are a rock in a weary land and a shelter in the time of storm. You're called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You're Allah, Adonai, Jehovah, and Yahweh. Like a shepherd, you make us to lie down in green pastures and pick us up when we fall down. Like a mother hen, you pull us under your wings for protection. When we're lost, you seek us and guide our feet home. When we're frightened, we turn our faces to you and find a way to peace a path to enlightenment, and the power to make our world just and fair. God of mercy and compassion and steadfast love, be with your people everywhere and in this place. Mold us and make us in your image, merciful and compassionate toward our neighbors near and far. And help us to love you and ourselves with generosity and humility. Oh, say can you see what is plain to behold? Though we shout liberty, there are too many in chains. We are shackled by greed and the fear we are small, but this truth must be told. There is one God who loves all. Won't you give me your hand? And together we'll stand. 
with radical love. Heal our souls and our land. Oh, say, can't we end all this fighting and strife and walk toward the light that we all might be free. In your many names we pray. Amen. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Reverend Lewis. And I remember almost five years ago that you were here shortly after the tragic massacre of Eric Garner. And I remember you and many of our clergy were here. And it's unfortunate that you would be here in the aftermath of decisions that have been made. I'd now like to ask Council Member Rivera to spread the invocation on record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for the opportunity to welcome the Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis from Middle Collegiate Church a 1,200 or so member, it is a global community of love, a multi-ethnic, welcoming, and inclusive congregation in the East Village, where I've spent my life. Dr. Lewis is a graduate of Princeton Theological Seminary and earned her PhD in Religion and Society, Psychology and Religion at Drew University. Ordained in the Presbyterian Church, she is the first African-American and first woman to serve as a senior minister in the Collegiate Church, which was founded in New York City in 1628 and is the oldest continuous Protestant church in North America. Dr. Lewis hosted Just Faith, an on-demand television program on MSNBC, and is a frequent commentator, activist, and author of a number of books. She uses her personal story as well as her spotlight, her well-deserved and respected spotlight to highlight how much, in the more, chamber. how much more we have to do in our mission for racial, economic, and environmental justice. In these divided and tumultuous times, I am so happy that we have a woman like Dr. Lewis at the helm of Middle Collegiate Church where activism, equality, and revolutionary love can all be found. I remember attending social justice trainings in the wake of Occupy Wall Street for the 99% Spring and joining her and young women from the Lower East Side Girls Club for leadership seminars. I stood with Dr. Lewis as we joined hand in hand with our brothers and sisters of all faiths who have been subjected to hate crimes and terrorism. And Middle Collegiate Church was the one place I knew I wanted to hold my inauguration to begin the honor of my life. The weather emergencies of the last few days have also reminded me how integral Middle Collegiate's congregation has been to our community in times of need. Many of them mobilized alongside our neighbors in the wake of Hurricane Sandy and the Second Avenue explosion. Thank you, Dr. Lewis, for being a trailblazer in love, charity, and activism, and I hope to follow your spirit in my work as a council member and just as a human being. And with that, I motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you so much, Council Member Rivera, and my mother is also a member, and so I'm proud to have you here today. Thank you.
We will now go on to the adoption of minutes by Council Member Antonio Reynoso. Motion to adopt the minutes. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. M176 withdrawing Jeffrey Roth for appointment to the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call ups. M177 Franklin Guest House. Uh, coupled on a call-up vote, and at this time, I'd ask for a roll call vote on today's land use call-up calendar. This is just on the land use call-up calendar. Cool. With permission, I would like to vote on all land use call-ups and couple items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Permission granted. I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Torres, permission to vote on all items? Granted. I vote aye. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Constantinidis. Carnegie. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. I don't know. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Today's land use call ups are adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, zero negative. We'll now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and welcome back to. Uh, stated. I hope everyone enjoyed a few weeks off uh, from these meetings, but we have a busy agenda ahead of us this month and powerfully here today, the BLAC of the City Council, we acknowledge the five-year anniversary of Eric Garner's death, and I want to say in solidarity, I can't breathe. I will also say that I am outraged, outraged, that our system has failed, his family, Time and time again, last week we learned that the Department of Justice decided not to file charges against Officer Daniel Pantaleo, and this was another slap in the face to his mother, Gwen Carr, and to his entire family. They have been denied justice consistently for the past five years. And simply put, those responsible for the death of Eric Garner must be held accountable and must be held accountable immediately. I'd also like to acknowledge the anniversary of the tragic loss of Councilmember James Davis. He was assassinated in this chamber 16 years ago to the day today. His senseless death, his tragic death, 
his assassination as a stark reminder that gun violence can occur anywhere. And we often think of Councilmember Davis when we walk into the member's lounge downstairs where there is a plaque that speaks about his public service towards the city of New York as a police officer, as a council member, as a community leader, as an activist. And I want his family to know that we are thinking of them today. We are thinking of uh, the amazing man that James Davis was, all that he did for our city. And I want to acknowledge that on this painful day for the Davis family, and it's important that we as a city council remember our former colleague. Today I also want to do something a little different. We always name the people who have succumbed to 9-11 illnesses at every stated meeting. And last week the fire department, the FDNY, New York City's bravest, reached a sad milestone. They announced that they had lost their 200th member to a 9-11 related illness, 200th member to a 9-11 related illness. That is on top of the 343 FDNY members who actually died on 9-11 itself. And today, hopefully, the United States Senate will be voting on reauthorizing the September 11th Victims' Compensation Fund. And today, this city council is voting on a resolution calling on Congress to act and to permanently authorize the funds for survivors and for their families. It is cruel, it is deeply cruel to make people who are sick from 9-11 related illnesses mm -hmm. to beg every couple of years. It re-traumatizes them and their families. So today, recognizing the importance of this potential Senate vote, I am going to stand here and read every single name of the 200 lost members of the FDNY who has succumbed to 9-11 related illnesses. And I know this isn't a comprehensive list of the thousands of people who suffered from 9-11 related illnesses. And I know this doesn't include the NYPD or other first responders, but just to mark this milestone for New York's bravest, I want to honor the 200 members of the FDNY who have lost their lives. And I want to uh, ask for people's patience as I read these 200 names, and I want to apologize if I get any of the uh, pronunciations wrong, uh, but I am going to uh, begin by reading the names of the 200 brave souls who we've lost since 9-11. Firefighter Robert W. Dillon. Firefighter Van Clive A. Johnson. Firefighter Russell C. Brinkworth. Firefighter Edward V. Tetchin. Firefighter Walter Voigt. Battalion Chief Kevin R. Burns. Firefighter Stephen M. Johnson. Lieutenant Richard M. Burke. Firefighter Michael Sophia. Firefighter Joseph P. Costello. Firefighter William R. O'Connor. Lieutenant Ronaldo Natal. Paramedic Deborah Reeve. Fire Marshal William Wilson Jr. Lieutenant Thomas J. Hodges. Firefighter Robert J. Weber. Lieutenant Joseph P. Kolori Jr. Firefighter Michael J. Shaggy. Firefighter William R. St. George. Firefighter Raymond W. Hauber. EMS Lieutenant Brian Ellicott. Firefighter William E. Moreau. Lieutenant John P. Murray. Firefighter Sean M. McCarthy. Firefighter Bruce M. Foss. Firefighter Jock W. Paltre. Firefighter Kevin M. Delano Sr. Lieutenant Vincent J. Tancredi II. Paramedic Clyde F. Seeley. Firefighter Timothy G. Lockwood. Firefighter Edward F. Riley Jr. Firefighter John F. McNamara. Lieutenant Thomas G. Roberts. Captain Kevin J. Cassidy. Firefighter Joan R. Daly. Firefighter Richard A. Minetta. Lieutenant Peter J. Farenkopf. Battalion Chief 
John J. Vaughn. Firefighter Robert A. Ford. Paramedic Corrine A. Brown. Firefighter James J. Ryan. Lieutenant Robert M. Hess. EMT Freddie Rosario. Lieutenant Harry Wanamaker Jr. Electrician Philip J. Berger. Firefighter Vincent J. Albanese. Firefighter John P. Sullivan Jr. Firefighter Roy W. Chelson. Firefighter John F. O'Neill. Lieutenant Randy J. Wiebecki. Firefighter Brian C. Malloy. Lieutenant John A. Garcia. Firefighter Anthony J. Nucio. Fire Marshal Stephen C. Mosiello. Firefighter Carl Capobianco. Firefighter Martin C. Simmons. Lieutenant Andrew M. Borges. Captain Emilio R. Longo. Firefighter Raymond Ragucci. Firefighter Virginia A. Spinelli. Captain Sheldon Burocas. Deputy Chief William J. Guido. Lieutenant Robert J. Stagmeyer. Stegmeyer. Lieutenant Mark W. McKay. Deputy Assistant Chief John S. McFarland. EMT Anthony J. Fakara. Lieutenant Patrick J. Sullivan. Firefighter Michael F. Mongelli. Firefighter Lawrence J. Sullivan. Firefighter Michael G. Behet. EMT Joseph V. Shumo. Paramedic Ruben I. Berrios. Battalion Chief John K. Corcoran. Firefighter Andrew D. Dal Cortivo. Lieutenant Martin T. Fulham. Firefighter Charles L. Jones III. Firefighter William H. Quick. Firefighter Willie T. Franklin Jr. Battalion Chief Thomas R. Van Duran. Firefighter Walter Torres. Battalion Chief Richard D. Arizosa. Supervising Fire Marshal Emil K. Harnischweger. Captain Peter J. Casey. Paramedic Rudolph T. Heckvelka. EMT Francis A. Charles. Paramedic John W. Wyatt Jr. Lieutenant Thomas, G. Thomas J. Greeny. Firefighter Keith E. Atlas. Lieutenant Stephen B. Reisman. Firefighter Joseph T. Callahan. Battalion Chief Richard E. McGuire. EMS Lieutenant Douglas Mulholland. EMT Luis de Pena. EMS Lieutenant Michael F. Cavanaugh. Deputy Chief Inspector James W. Mandelkow. Lieutenant John, G. John J. Halpin. EMS Captain William C. Olson. Lieutenant Keith M. Laughlin. Lieutenant John K. Grems. Lieutenant Howard J. Bischoff. Firefighter Daniel E. Hegland. Firefighter Robert E. Lever. Firefighter Cornell L. Horn. EMS Lieutenant Thomas Giamarino. Firefighter Eugene J. McCary. Firefighter James J. Marshall. Firefighter Charles S. Zoke. Battalion Chief John J. Cassidy. Captain John R. Graziano. Firefighter Gregory A. Chavalli. Firefighter Adolfo Atanio. Firefighter Ronald R. Bernician. Firefighter Richard E. Noggin. Auto Mechanic Rafael E. Scarpiti. Battalion Chief George D. Iser. Captain John Gallagher. Captain Thomas J. Thompson. Firefighter Dennis J. Heedles Sr. Firefighter Nicholas J. DeMasi. Battalion Chief James N. Costello. Firefighter Frank D. Fontano. EMS Lieutenant Harold E. McNeil Sr. Lieutenant Gary J. Gates. Firefighter Michael P. Smith. 
Firefighter, Thomas J. Kelly. Firefighter, jo Joseph A. Morstadt. Lieutenant, Robert G. Alford. Firefighter, Gary E. Celitani. Lieutenant, Cruz Antonio Fernandez. Firefighter, Robert J. Vitriglia. Firefighter, James M. Hicks. Firefighter, Thomas A. Lynn. EMT, Normis, Norman Va Valle. Firefighter, Thomas Farrell. Firefighter, Robert W. Johnson. Fire Marshal, Gregorio Morales. Firefighter, William E. Woodlawn. Lieutenant, Ronald D. Biller. Captain Vincent R. Ungaro. Firefighter, Paul F. Santoro. Firefighter, John A. Dunn. Firefighter, Harry L. Davis. Lieutenant Raymond W. Alexander. Firefighter, Joseph P. O'Toole. Firefighter, Kevin A. Rooney. Firefighter, Brian J. Masterson. Firefighter, Robert F. DiGiovanni. EMS Lieutenant, Edith E. Torres. Firefighter, Robert E. Newman. EMT, Rose M. Scott. Lieutenant, Stephen Sorger. EMS Lieutenant, Mario Bastidas. Firefighter, Roy E. Smith. Firefighter, James J. Lanza. Paramedic, Mark A. Harris. Firefighter, Raymond J. Pfeiffer. Lieutenant William J. Kelly. Firefighter Robert, Firefighter William J. Gormley. Marine Engineer Robert W. Alexander. EMS Lieutenant Walter J. Walter J. Nelson Jr. Firefighter Michael L. Duffy. Battalion Chief Joseph D. McKeon. Firefighter Michael R. O'Hanlon. Firefighter Robert M. Teal Corsio. Lieutenant Edward J. McDonough. Lieutenant Joseph R. Stash, Jr. Firefighter Raymond R. Phillips, Jr. Firefighter Ronald P. Zvek. Lieutenant Edward T. Meehan. Deputy Chief Jody Frizzell. Firefighter Paul R. Tokarski. Pilot Thomas P. Phelan. Firefighter Keith R. Young. Marine Engineer John L. Bueller. Firefighter George F. Frolick. Firefighter Robert J. Lembo. Assistant Chief Ronald R. Spadafora. Doctor Michael J. Michael G. Gutenberg. Captain Victor C. Valva. Firefighter Brent G. Crowback. Firefighter Charles Williams. Battalion Chief Robert P. Musio. Firefighter Michael T. McDonald. Firefighter Jimmy Martinez. Firefighter Dennis G. Heaney. Firefighter John R. Elge. EMT Felipe A. Torre. Paramedic Martha Stewart. EMT Joseph A. Rodriguez. Firefighter Daniel C. Bovey. Captain John S. Moschella. Lieutenant Timothy P. O'Neill. Firefighter Kevin E. Lennon. Firefighter Richard H. Meehan. Firefighter Anthony Elise. Lieutenant John T. Moran. Firefighter Joseph Walsh. Firefighter Lloyd W. Stewart. Firefighter Kevin J. Nolan. And firefighter Richard N. Driscoll. I want to apologize if I mispronounced any names. I want to apologize if I forgot any names. This was a list that was given to us this morning by the FDNY, and if I accidentally skipped over a name in reading those names, I want to apologize to the families. It was unintentional. We wanted to be inclusive in reading the 200 names of New York's bravest who have succumbed and lost their lives because of 9-11 related illnesses. And I hope the United States Senate votes on this bill today to permanently reauthorize, and this is not a partisan issue. This is about doing what is right for these families and for the survivors who are still battling 9-11 related illnesses. And I want any member of the United States Senate who would attempt to speak out against this bill to meet with these families mm -hmm. of these 200 men and women, to look them in the eyes 
and to tell them why the United States government should not permanently take care of the heroes who served in the aftermath of the largest attack that has ever taken place on U.S. soil. This is the right thing to do. The U.S. Senate must vote today to finally take care of these families. The House did it. The Senate must do it. We must not re-traumatize these survivors or make them anxious by having them wonder, will the U.S. government step up to support them? So I hope that this is not a partisan issue. I hope that we just do the right thing. In addition to these brave firefighters, I'm also sad to share that we've learned of the deaths of nine other 9-11 first responders since our last meeting three weeks ago. Nine more people have died. One of the heroes, they're all heroes, one of the main heroes who has dedicated, he dedicated his life NYPD Detective Luis Alvarez, 53 years old, testified many times on Capitol Hill. He fought for the rights of 9-11 first responders tirelessly. He passed away a few weeks ago at the end of June from cancer contracted down at Ground Zero. NYPD Detective Luis Alvarez, age 53. NYPD Detective Andrea Rayner, who was a retired member of the 109th Precinct, 58 years old. Retired Sergeant Jack Casey, he served almost 40 years and had been honored with two Medals of Valor for his acts of bravery, volunteered at the pile after 9-11. He was 78 years old. Michael Ornauer, a captain of the Long Beach Fire Department who supported with field communications at Ground Zero. He was 60 years old. Simon Cock was a detective with the, F with the NYPD. I don't have his age. Christopher Cranston, 48 years old. He was an NYPD detective who spent six months, six months working down on the pile. Nicholas Policeno, he reported to work down at Ground Zero while working with Con Edison. He was 41 years old. Retired Sergeant Thomas Fennessy, age 64. He served in the NYPD for more than 20 years. And Detective Thomas Santora served down at Ground Zero with the NYPD. These people deserve our support and their families deserve our support. Do the right thing. Permanently authorize the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund and do it today. I also want to recognize a number of others who we've lost, who have passed in the week since our last dated meeting. First, construction worker Renee Treveria was killed earlier this month while working at a recycling plant in the Bronx. We have lost another member of the FDNY to suicide, the fourth in the last month. Officer Kevin Priest was 53 when he took his own life. My thoughts go out to the NYPD community as well as to Officer Priest's family, and we want all of our officers to get the help that they need if they are struggling. Our law enforcement officers take an oath to serve. We need to make clear that we are there for them in their time of need. To the women and men in uniform, do not hesitate to ask for help. New York City will support you. We've also recently lost two incredible leaders and advocates for our city. Hector Figueroa was a visionary labor leader who dedicated his entire life to helping working women and men across this country and especially here in New York City. He led the charge for better wages, for better working conditions. He did not care if you were a member of his union or not. The fight for 15. If you were a working person in our city who needed help, 
Hector was in your corner. A year ago when we were passing a bill to help taxi workers in New York City, those workers were not part of 32BJ. Hector was here supporting them. Name any issue that benefited working women and men and Hector Figueroa was there. I am so sorry to his children and his wife. His death is untimely and it is a gigantic loss for the city of New York and for our entire country. There are not many people like Hector Figueroa. Additionally, Manhattan District Attorney Robert Morgenthau served our city through some of its most tumultuous times. He helped transform the Manhattan DA's office into the most respected law enforcement agencies in the country. And he worked tirelessly as a civic leader and an advocate with organizations like the Police Athletic League, the Museum of Jewish Heritage, and in recognition of Armenian genocide. I am deeply appreciative of the work that both of these men did for the greatest city in the world, our city, New York City. And lastly, there's one that's personal to us. Selena Glenn, who worked at the New York City Council for 31 years, served under five speakers. She began her tenure as Council Member Enoch Williams' as Chief of Staff and eventually transferred over to the central staff. Her contributions were endless, and as many of you know, she embodied integrity and inspired it in those around her. We are grateful for her 31 years of service. We'll miss her tremendously. I know that there are a lot of people here at the council who are in a lot of pain mm -hmm. because they knew Selena so well, and all of us knew Selena when she sat downstairs next to Miss Phyllis and greeted everyone warmly with a smile. So I wanna give my condolences to Selena's family and I wanna thank her for her life of service and for serving for 31 years here at the New York City Council. Now I ask that we all rise and take a moment of silence to honor every single person that I mentioned. Thank you. I'd also like to recognize a few staff members who will be leaving the council. Tanya Cyrus is a senior legislative policy analyst and has been working at the New York City Council for 11 years. Many of us have been lucky enough to work with her as she has supported numerous committees, including those on higher education, cultural affairs, and general welfare. She'll be moving on to work with the Mayor's Office of Legislative Affairs, and we are sad to see her go. Where is Tanya? Where is she? Oh, they can see a big round of applause. And additionally, Elaine Kim will be leaving Council Member Koo's office later this month to start law school. So we want to congratulate Elaine and say good luck to her. Okay, now let's dive into today's agenda. The council will vote on the following five Article 11 property tax exemptions, the Putnam Portfolio and Councilmember Ayala and Perkins's district, St. Anne's Apartments and Councilmember Ayala, Gibson and Salamanca's districts, and 603 Pontiac Place in Councilmember Ayala's district. 
The council will vote on the following land use items. The first is in Councilmember Karen Kozowitz's district, and the second one is in Councilmember Costa Constantinides's district. Both applications will bring non-conforming buildings into conformance with current zoning. 704 Cortland Avenue and Chair Salamanca's district will facilitate the development of 100% affordable building and will be voting on the withdrawal of the Casena Center rezoning in Councilmember Coos district. Moving on, the council will vote on the following pieces of legislation. The first is pre-considered introduction number 1631, which will ceremonially, ceremonially co-name 86 streets, thoroughfares, and public places for people, including several police officers who died in the line of duty and first responders who died of 9-11 illnesses. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Chris Sartori and Patrick Mulvihill. Next, introduction 1272A, sponsored by Councilmember Grudenchik, would amend reporting requirements for organizations that are affiliated with elected officials, but that do not engage in promotional activities such as advertising for those elected officials. Based on feedback to a local law passed last session and with the support of the Conflicts of Interest Board, this bill sets separate reporting requirements for these unrestricted organizations without changing the requirements for restricted organizations. This bill will still require unrestricted organizations to report to COIB, but to do so without placing an undue burden on them and in a manner that will allow COIB to focus its oversight on the types of concerning activities that both COIB and the law we passed intended for them to focus on. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Brad Reed, Michelle Lee, and Chris Sortori. Next, introduction 886A, sponsored by Councilman Rafael Espinal, will require a pilot program for pet harbors that will allow owners to leave pets unattended in safe, enclosed shelters on sidewalks adjacent to commercial establishments for a short period of time. Congratulations, Rafael. I know you've worked hard on this, and I want to thank the staff who worked on this, James and Giovanni and Elliot Lind, and I want to thank James and Elliot for a bunch of the bills we have coming up. From transportation, we have introduction 1457A, sponsored by Councilmember Carlos Menchaca. This bill will allow cyclists to follow pedestrian control signals at leading pedestrian interval intersections, providing them with a head start to enter the intersection before the lights turn green for automobile drivers. Uh, we also have two bills related to parking. Introduction 84A by Councilmember Chaim Deutsch will help clarify whether certain parking restrictions are in effect by requiring the Departments of Education and Transportation to post information online about when public schools are in session over the summer. And Introduction 570A, sponsored by Councilmember uh, Mark Traeger, would create a defense to parking violations in cases where both sides of the parking sign are illegible. I want to thank James and Elliot for those package of bills as well. Lastly, we will vote on a package of bills designed to help small businesses by providing them with needed information and training and by collecting data related to the city's storefronts that will inform policy going forward. The city currently lacks the data necessary to make informed decisions relating to, the small, to small businesses that are so vital to our communities, and these bills will tackle that issue head on. Introduction 1049, sponsored by Councilmember Rivera, would require an assessment of storefront businesses and the business environment of 20 community districts every three years, including a survey to business owners in coordination with community-based organizations. From Councilmember Mark Joni, the chair of our Small Business Committee, introduction 1467A will require the Department of Small Business Services to create an online portal containing user-friendly listings of rules and regulations applied to small businesses. This portal will be updated as agencies make rule changes, an easy way for small businesses to know what the rules are and to streamline it. And Councilmember Joni, Chair Joni, also has introduction 1000B, and it will establish the city definition definition for micro-businesses, which are those with fewer than 10 employees and would require specific reporting by small business services on these mom and pop type shops, which are so vital to the fabric of New York City. I want to congratulate the chair on these two bills. Introduction 1471B, sponsored by Councilmember Rosenthal, would provide additional support 
to the small business community by requiring small business services to provide training and education relating to efficiency, regulatory compliance, and marketing, and also from Councilmember Rosenthal, introduction 1472 will require reporting on commercial properties and would establish a public data set of information related to leases, vacancies, and property specifications. Collecting this information and making it accessible now is key to sound policy making in the future. And I want to thank Rachel Cordero and Irene Bahovsky for their work on this package of bills. The council is going to vote on three important resolutions. Inter Resolution 746 put forward by Councilmember Carlina Rivera calls on the New York State Legislature to pass legislation requiring the creation of fair regulations for hospitals related to drug testing people who are pregnant or giving birth. And I want to thank Emily Balkan and the staff for working on this resolution. Resolution 740 from Councilmember Brad Lander calls on the New York City Administration for Children's Services to implement a policy that the mere possession or use of marijuana does not itself create an eminent risk of harm to a child or warrant a child's removal. And I want to thank Paul Senegal from the staff for working on that resolution. And finally, finally, and so vitally important, Resolution 897A from Councilmember Danique Miller, the chair of our Committee on Civil Service and Labor. This is co-sponsored with Councilmember Margaret Chin, which calls on Congress to pass and the President to sign legislation permanently authorizing the 9-11 Victims' Compensation Fund, as I already mentioned. And uh, this resolution, we are standing up and telling Washington that these first responders, police officers, firefighters, sanitation workers, and other victims uh, th of the horrific attack that we experience deserve better than to keep after going back to ask for support. I want to thank Kevin Katowski for working on this resolution. That concludes our agenda for today's state of meeting, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. For those of you who have bills that are being voted on today specifically, we will now begin with Council Member Carlos Menchaca. Thank you so much, Majority Leader. And I rise to speak on 1447, uh, 1457A. The city has been working incredibly hard around Vision Zero and made a lot of investments Yet today we stand with some incredible misfortunes. We have seen deaths this year for cyclists higher than in recent years. And we still fundamentally treat bicycles like cars and other motor vehicles. In fact, the National Safety Administration has now for the second year reported, and we now know that motor vehicle accident or motor vehicle crashes fell nationwide by 1%. But cyclist fatalities nationally has soared 10%, while pedestrian deaths rose 4%. Just today, we re received news that in Staten Island, another death has happened for a cyclist. That makes 16 cyclists dead this year, 10 last year. This is wrong, and it needs to stop. The culprit in, in this transportation conversation is the culture that continues to privilege cars and treat cyclists like drivers or motor vehicles, rather than what they are more, more like which are pedestrians. We blame cyclists. We blame pedestrians. This has to stop. The speaker is calling on an incredible vision for data-driven, comprehensive redesign so that we bring dignity and safety back into our communities. I first introduced this bill in 2016. That took us a long time to get the DOT and the NYPD to work together, and we did that. We had patience, and we sat down. This is not something that we just created a couple months ago. That led to a study that the NYPD and the DOT conducted that led to really great information, and I want to share with you if you are on the fence. The results say that over the seven months conducted between April and, and October of 2018, they documented a decrease in 27% drop in injuries at intersections. And what we know is that intersections are where people die. I ask you to support this bill, 1457A. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Menchaca, Councilmember Jonai, followed by Councilmember Chin, and then Barron. Thank you, Madam Chair. Locally owned mom and pop shops are in trouble, and far too many are finding it harder and harder to keep their doors open, whether it be to big box store competition, consumer behavior changes, the internet, rent, 
real estate taxes or government regulation, our small businesses are finding it more and more difficult to keep their doors open. Businesses with less than 10 employees are responsible for almost 80% of New York City's workforce. So it is not an exaggeration to say that our city's local economy and success is dependent on having a thriving small business sector. Today, this body is considering a package of bills, and in particular, two that I have introduced that will bring much needed relief to struggling local businesses. The first step in solving any problem is to define it. We need to be more proactive than reactive. The hurdles faced by local dry cleaner and butcher can be very different from those faced by General Electric and Amazon. The federal government defines small business as an entity of up to 1,500 employees, and the state defines it at up to 100 employees. We need a stronger focus on much smaller businesses. That is why I've, I'm the proud sponsor of Intro 1000, a bill that establishes the term micro-business as one with less than 10 employees. This bill will also require SBS to survey b these businesses to help assess the actual issue they face. Once we have the data, we can take proactive and targeted programs to address these specific needs. New York City has approximately 6,000 rules and regulations that govern businesses. Many are outdated and are a mystery even to government workers that are responsible for enforcing them. It is almost impossible for business owners who are juggling payroll, suppliers, and changing customer trends to have the time to keep up with the maze of municipal regulations that govern their businesses. I'm also proud to sponsor Intro 1467. This bill would require SBS to establish a searchable interactive guide to aid business owners in understanding the city rules and regulations. I want to thank the council staffers who have helped make these bills a reality. A special thanks to the bill drafters and government affairs division, including Robert Newman, Laura Popa, Rachel Cordero, Irene Bajowski, Joe Nunn Zolka, and of course, thank you to the bill's co-sponsors and to our very own speaker, Corey Johnson, for his leadership. With that said, I encourage all of my colleagues to vote in support of these bills. Thank you, Councilmember Joe and I. We'll now go to Councilmember Chin and then followed by Councilmember Barron. Thank you, Majority Leader. I want to speak about the life of Staff Sergeant James McNaughton and the street co-naming in his honor that we are voting on today. I want to begin by acknowledging his parents who are here today, William and Michelle, and the officer uh, that are here today, Chief De La Torre, Inspector Mundo, Captain uh, Fida Cor Carroll, Sergeant Brennan, Detective Rudolph, and Police Officer Kenny. Jimmy embodied the very best of NYPD, selflessness, duty, and honor. In addition to serving in Transit District 2, Jimmy was an Army reservist. In the weeks after 9-11, he patrolled the subways to reassure his fellow New Yorkers during a time of extreme fear and anxiety. When the Iraq War began, Jimmy was redeployed and joined his fellow officer at Camp Victory in Baghdad to train Iraqi police officers. Upon hearing reports of snipers in the area, Jimmy volunteered for guard duty despite the danger. In an act of selflessness, Jimmy argued that he was the better candidate for the job, given that he was single while other officers had family back home. While guarding the camp in 2005, a sniper bullet ended his life. He was only 27 years old. He became the first NYPD officer killed in Iraq, and his legacy lives on in the memory held by his family, friends, and his fellow NYPD officer. He was honored with a bronze plaque in Transit District 2 headquarters. In a touching personal tribute, the locker Jimmy used is permanently sealed. Our New York City Council must do its part to ensure that Jimmy's legacy is never forgotten I believe we can do this by approving the proposed application to co-name West Broadway between Lesbonaut and Canal Street, James McNaughton Way. This is one small thing that our city can do to express our gratitude for his sacrifice and service to our city and our country. And I urge all my colleagues to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Chin. We'll now move to Councilmember Barron. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to call attention to the life of Reverend James Jimmy Miller. He was born August 17, 1932. He grew up in Harlem, but moved to East New York, and we were able to have the benefit of his service to our community. He grew up in a close-knit family, and they were centered on providing service in the community. I guess that led to the roots of his being so involved in so many community organizations. He enlisted in the U.S. Army and served in the Korean War. He was married to his wife, Ethel, for 63 years. And after 26 years of service to the New York City Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Associations, uh, he retired. He was ordained as a minister in 1960, and he served as an assistant pastor of the First Baptist Church, First Faith Baptist Church, and co-pastor of the Second Emmanuel Baptist Church. He was installed as a pastor in 1995. Among the many community and civic organizations that he was involved with, he was a past worship master of the Masonic Temple. He was chair of the Representative Council for a Better New York. He was chair of the school board for the East New York Alliance, president of the Lewis H. Pink House Tenant Association, and chair of the board of the East New York multi-service center. And his legacy is enshrined in all the work that he has done and also in his son, our colleague, I, Danique Miller. So it gives me great pleasure to sponsor this co-naming and I ask all of you to support with your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Barron. We'll now go to Council Member Deutsch, followed by Council Member Eugene. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, today we are voting on intro 84, my bill that will clarify parking regulations around school facilities during the summer sessions. Intro 84 will, re will require that prior to June 30th every year, the Department of Education posts a list of all locations where summer sessions are active in New York City public schools, and then report these locations to the Department of Transportation. DOT is then required to list the, correspond the, the corresponding locations where there is restricted parking that is in effect on summer school days. By making this list pub uh, uh, publicly available, we are ensuring that the city is transparent about regulations surrounding schools. We are also taking steps to ensure that unwarranted uh, parking violations are not issued to unsuspecting drivers. Intro 84 is a way to properly inform New Yorkers about already existing parking spaces that are available during the summer months where people would otherwise be afraid to park because of a lack of accessible information about summer sessions in a particular building. Non-existent parking can be a tremendous stress, particularly in areas with lack of accessible mass transit. I encourage my colleagues to support this bill, and I thank my 12 colleagues who have signed on to this bill for their co-sponsorship. I also thank Transportation Committee Chair Udonis Rodriguez and, and James uh, G. G D.G. Vanni, Council of Transportation's Committee, for their work on this bill. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Deutsch. And now we will hear from Council Member Eugene, but I just want to uh, inform all of the members that we are in jeopardy of losing quorum, so um, there will be no more uh, permission granted to either leave the meeting, and we should try to keep our remarks succinct. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Majority Leader. I will be very, very brief. Uh, today we are voting on uh, intro 1631. Uh, we are going to name two areas in my district after two very important uh, uh, people who have made a tremendous contribution to the United States of America. And I want to talk about uh, Pierre Toussaint. Pierre Toussaint came from Haiti, and uh, he was uh, a philanthropist. He have contributed so much to Manhattan and to New York City. He created an orphanage for children, sending children to school, feed them, and also give them work, jobs. And also, he used to say to everybody, if you come to New York City, you don't have a place to live, come to my house. And he was one of the first person to give funding for the construction of the St. Patrick Cathedral in Manhattan. And he is also the only lay person whose body was transported to be buried in the St. Patrick Cathedral. And we are going to name also another area uh, for my district after Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable. Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable also 
is from Haiti. He, was the, he, he is known as the founder of Chicago. He was the first person to settle in Chicago. He created infrastructures, and he was also the one who was leading so many businesses in Chicago. If we, today we can talk about chi Chicago, it is also because of Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable. If you go to Chicago, you will see museum, school, also libraries, and monuments named after Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable. And uh, I think that we are doing a wonderful job by paying tribute to those uh, two wonderful people who have contributed as immigrants to the fabric and to the fabric and the greatness of the United States of America. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you. And I, too, also have a few co-namings in my district that I briefly just wanted to recognize as uh, many of the individuals are here. One, uh, the Malbone uh, Centennial Way. Um, and this commemorates the co-naming of the Malbourne Street Wreck, a subway derailment that killed 93 people and left hundreds injured on November 1st, 1918. It has been just over 100 years since this terrible tragedy, but in many ways those lost souls still resonate today. I also want to acknowledge in my district Walt Whitman Way, and this has been a group effort throughout my community. Walt Whitman was an American poet, journalist, and essayist who con was considered one of America's most influential poets of our time. And Walt Whitman's 200th birthday was on May 31st, 2019. I also want to acknowledge uh, street co-naming of FBI Special Agent Edwin R. Woodruff Way, and this will be on Claver Place and Franklin Avenue in the Borough of Brooklyn, as well as we will be doing a change in the reading of sign for Christopher Notorious B.I.G. Wallace Way on St. James Place between Fulton Street and Gates Avenue in Brooklyn. Uh, Christopher Wallace was a cultural giant whose name has become synonymous with style, attitude, action, and artistic freedom. A son of Brooklyn, he is perhaps one of the most influential figures to ever come out of the borough and is internationally recognized throughout the world. I also want to recognize, and the family of Randy Weston are here today. Randy Weston is an artistic jazz giant, um, an international legend who is known throughout the world. He is a composer, a pianist, and has traveled throughout the world, utilizing so many different sounds from West Africa, Moroccan, and later Egyptian and East Asian elements all throughout his sound. He is a Brooklyn native, a giant. For 70 years, enchanted music lovers of all ages were welcomed to his studios across the country. I personally had an opportunity to work with Randy Weston as he performed in many of our NYCHA developments in outdoor concerts for free. He gave of his life and he gave of his talent freely amongst those whom he loved. And he had a huge heart. Uh, he is joined here today with Fatuma and his three daughters. Um, his wife and partner are certainly an example of the extraordinary bond between two people. And finally, I want to recognize a very tragic story in my district, uh, Mal Kwan Jutel. At the intersection of Gold Street and York Street, he was tragically killed waiting at a bus stop outside of the Farragut houses. His family later started a scholarship and emergency well, fund in the name at John Jay College, where he earned his bachelor's degree. This co-naming honors the son of Brooklyn who overcame all odds to be the best that he could be. This co-naming represents Mal Kwan's uh, fight for excellence and education in our black and brown communities. He was only 17 years old and he is joined today with his mom who has fought tremendously to make sure that the legacy of her son continues on. So I thank all of you for all of the street co-namings that you all have all submitted because it's certainly, I believe, that when we say the, the names of our lost ones, they live on forever. We will now go on to report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, intro 1281A. 
amended and laid over. Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered Reso 998, Transparency Resolution. Coupled in general orders. Pre-considered LU 472 and Reso 1006 through pre-considered LU 476 and Reso 1010, Tax Exemptions. Coupled in general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 464 and Reso 1011 and LU 465 and Reso 1012, Casena Center. Coupled to be filed pursuant to a letter of withdrawal. Excuse me, LU 466 West 18th Street Garage. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. L excuse me, LU 467 and Reso 1013 through LU 470 and Reso 1016, zoning amendments and property disposition. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation, pre considered intro 1631, naming of 86 thoroughfares in public places. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, intro 1000B through intro 1472, vacant storefronts and small business services. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Standards and Ethics, Intro 1272A, Reporting Requirements. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 84A and 570A, Parking Regulations. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 886A, Pet Harbors. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1470. 1457A, pedestrian control signals. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled in general orders, and at this time, I'd ask for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Kalos. Aye and all. Adams. Aye and all. Ampri Samuel. Aye and all. Ayala. Aye and all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to rise to also add my acknowledgments to the great life of Randy Weston. He was a profound artist, and he made our organization, uh, the House of the Lord Elementary School, a uh, part of his support circle. And he did several concerts for us and did not charge us. It was a benefit concert, so I certainly want to acknowledge the co-naming of that street. And secondly, I want to vote aye on all, with the exception of 1457A, on which I am abstaining. Thank you. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you so much. I first want to congratulate my colleagues on their bills today. But I want to take a moment to talk to you about Puerto Rico. I just got back uh, yesterday morning, um, having uh, been part of the protest that is taking place there. I, I, it's my hope that we continue to put the pressure on that every elected official, uh, anyone who has any level of influence uh, to continue to put the pressure is we have an epic failure of leadership. We have a leadership crisis in Puerto Rico, and as someone that was raised in Puerto Rico, uh, and into the age of 14, it, it pains me uh, to see what uh, Puerto Ricans are going through. The level of corruption has reached an uh, epic level. The brackish uh, comments that were made against the LGBT community, the, 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 the brackish uh, distasteful comments that were made against uh, those who die, those who die at, 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 in the aftermath of Maria I mean, this is, it, and this is something that has occurred uh, for, uh, in decades, but it has reached a place where people have literally lost their faith in government. Uh, the credibility of the governor uh, is, is beyond repair. It's beyond repair. And, and so it's my hope uh, that this body, uh, whatever we could do, and I think the best thing that we could do, we could. Uh, be a, a concert of voices together to be able to send a clear and loud message to the governor. It's time for him to resign, and we say together, Ricky, renuncia. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member. Matteo. No one, 1472, aye on the rest. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. I'm voting no on 1457A and I on all the rest. Constantinidis. I on all. Carnegie. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. 
I'd just like to add my voice to the sentiments of my colleagues around um, Randy Weston and his family. I'd like to congratulate the family, his commitment to uh, the community, uh, not, uh, not just musically, but civically, was outstanding. And I just want to point out that at 6'8", he demonstrated that you could do something else besides play basketball. He's a world-class musician. That's for you, Laurie Combo. <laughs> Thank you. And how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you, Robert Cornegy. Deutsch. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. So I just briefly want to thank uh, Councilmember uh, Danique Miller for sponsoring the resolution today calling upon Congress to pass and the President to sign the September 11th Victim Compensation Fund Act. Uh, speaking as someone who responded in the rescue efforts following the 9-11 attacks in our country, I want to emphasize the critical importance of showing our first responders that we did not forget about them on September 12th, 2001. The sacrifices made by our city's greatest heroes extend well beyond the 412 who were lost in the, in the attack that day. More than 2,000 deaths since 9-11 have been attributed to the toxic air that was inhaled at Ground Zero. I'm glad that we at the Council are doing our part to give back to those who serve our city, and I hope that Congress will do the same and pass the Compensation Fund Act. Uh, thank you, and I vote no on 1457A and on I and the rest. Thank you. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye on all. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye on all. Holden. Uh, aye on all except for intro 1457A and 1281A, which I vote no. King. Um, I vote aye on all and congratulations as we renamed Dyer and Light Street Jamaica Progressive League Way. Thank you. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. I on all except uh, 1457. Lander. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to uh, acknowledge that we're voting today on Thelma Martin Way, which is the northwest side of Atlantic Avenue and Third Avenue in the borough of Brooklyn. Thelma Martin developed national, state, and local sponsored programs, including the Youth Development, Delinquency, and Recreational Program, the Commercial Revitalization Program, the Community Achievement Project, the Work Incentive Program, and the Structured Educational Support Program. She developed the first youth conference and served as the executive director of South Brooklyn Community Corporation, where she organized the first annual South Brooklyn Summer Festival along Atlantic Avenue, which is the predecessor to the Atlantic Antic. She was also a member of Community Board 16, the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce, the New York State Association of Renewal and Housing Officials, the 76th Precinct, Precinct Council, Vice President of the New York City Association of Executive Directors, Chairperson of the Board of Directors of the Jules Michael Daycare Center and Chairperson of the Pastor Public Relations Committee. She also uh, received rewards, awards from the New York State Democratic Party, the Youth Committee Board 16, Ladies of Planning Board 16, and the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, so we're very uh, honored to be uh, co-naming Atlantic Avenue in, in commemoration of Thelma Martin. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Levine, Levine. Vote aye on all. Lewis. Aye on all and abstaining from 1457. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, I just want to read a couple tweets from folks who have uh, reached out about the LPI law, 1457A. I know some of you have uh, had concerns and are expressing it in a no vote. Uh, Rachel Cole says, I fear for my husband and eight-year-old son's life every time they bike. By biking instead of driving, they reduce emissions and congestion for everyone else. The more people that bike, the better. 
the least we can do for cyclists is to protect them from getting hit. From a uh, tweet from Brooklyn Biker, thank you for pushing this bill. It's safer. It's a safer use of street space. Not having to drag race NYC motorists from the green light using the LPI gets me in front and visible to drivers. Never forget those magic words that all killer drivers out there say. I didn't see them. This is what we're talking about, and I want to say thank you to the incredible team at, on the Transportation Committee for working on this bill uh, that includes James uh, DiGiovanni, Elliot Lynn, Emily Rooney, uh, and of course Jeffrey Baker, uh, the speaker who has been pushing uh, incredible legislation that and vision about breaking car culture. This is not easy, so I understand that there are concerns. This is how we do it, and it's not going to be easy here even in the City Council, um, as some of you have abstained, and I wish to talk to you and work with you to understand where those concerns are coming from. And I also want to say thank you to Jason, uh, the Chief of Staff. I vote aye on all. Lander. Aye on all. Miller. Permission to explain my vote, please? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. First, I'd like to congratulate all my colleagues on the, the thoughtful and impactful legislation uh, and resolutions that are being passed today. Um, I, we often do that work, but today, as I was in the Red Room and, and, and listened to some of the work of my colleagues, I'm very proud of the work that this body is, been, is doing. i also like to acknowledge um, the contributions of those that we are recognizing through the street rename, co-namings uh, that we'll be voting on um, the lives of uh, ordinary New Yorkers that made uh, extraordinary contributions to our city. So very proud to be a part of that. And I will be voting aye on all and abstaining from 1457A. Moya. Aye. Perkins. May I be excused to explain my vote? Prior to voting on the budget adoption, and I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that one of the items I am voting on today, a proposed Article 11 tax exemption will affect and apply to the building where I currently reside. Otherwise, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. I vote aye, and congratulations to Carlos Menchaca. Richards. Uh, permission to explain my vote quick. Um, just want to acknowledge uh, three co-namings today. Mary Moore, Barbara Smith, Lamine Sarr. They were phenomenal community leaders, and I'm so joyous that today we'll honor their legacies. I also wanted to commend my colleague, Danique Miller, for his resolution today. Um, you know, 9-11 uh, first responders deserve so much more. Um, you know, what Rand Paul did uh, this week is, is nearly, un it's unforg uh, it's unforgivable actually. Um, you know, people went down there and sacrificed their, sacrificed their lives um, for us and for many of those families who were lost down there. And they deserve the dignity and respect and to be treated with that um, for their sacrifices. Uh, so with that being said, I happily vote aye. Kozlowitz. I'd like to change my vote on one item, 1457. I'd like to vote no. Thank you. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. So in lieu of, of general discussion, I just wanted to add my voice. A lot of us are taking to the streets, protesting, rallying in, on a number of issues, and we can't take away from what's happening in Puerto Rico. And I want to thank uh, my council member, Kali Cabrera, for bringing it up. Because on July 23rd, 1967, Puerto Rico held its first vote on its political status. And 52 years later, the people on the island continue to make their collective voices heard with million, a million people taking to the streets of San Juan, Puerto Rico. So I want to say that the United States continues to let down Borinquen by neglecting Americans devastated by disaster, debt, and deregulation. And I want to commend everyone who has joined in, whether on Twitter or wherever it is, to say that they stand in solidarity with the people of Puerto Rico, and especially those who have called for the resignation of the Governor Ricardo Rosselló. 
I want to thank you. It means a lot to me personally, and I think as a body who people look to to make, to send messages about national issues affecting our neighbors and fellow Americans, it's important that we say something. Y que Puerto Rico se levanta. And I vote aye. Thank you. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. In solidarity to Karina Rivera, all our brothers from, the, from Puerto Rican, uh, this is a difficult moment, and as we have said before today, we all had to act as being Puerto Rican. Uh, we need to be sure that this gentleman who is now in charge of Puerto Rico resigned. So uh, please, let's join this movement. Let's use our social media. Let's put our voices together, standing for all Puerto Rican. With that, I will aye. Thank you. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, I want to announce that the United States Senate just passed the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund. But our resolution today calls on the President to sign it, so we are still voting on that. Thank you. Adams. I'd like to change my vote and abstain on 1457A. Thank you. Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, I want to thank my colleagues today for joining me in recognizing injustice and justice denied. And I want to thank them for standing with us in the name of justice. So I want to thank all of my colleagues and the speaker for supporting this effort today. And um, I'm really proud to say that we are going to name a street after William A. Morris, Jr., who was a World War II veteran, who uh, traced his lineage back to the last slave that was sold on Staten Island in the 1700s. And he was a founding member and became the first president of the Staten Island chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or the NAACP. Um, he also uh, served in the 369th Infantry Division. He served both in the European and Pacific theaters of operations, including D-Day and the invasion of Normandy and the Battle of the Bulge. Um, and he has uh, a long history in terms of being a community activist, uh, a Boy Scout leader, uh, earning the highest uh, recognition in Boy Scouting, the Silver Beaver Award, and um, started a, a, a baseball league which served uh, for 16 years and served more than 900 children each summer. Mr. Morris really was a, a local and a national hero, um, and his, his story about his World War II exploits were documented in a book that his daughter wrote, Dolores Morris wrote, in 2015, called The Soldier That Wagged Her Tail. Um, he actually had a dog that served alongside of him in the Pacific Theater, so thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rose. Rosenthal. I am all. Salamanca. Um, I am then disclosing on a record of the council proceedings that my wife and my stepson are associated with the New York City Parks Department of Recreation, and I am today voting to allocate funding to this entity, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, I want to thank my the speaker and my colleagues for supporting intro 570, my bill in relation to el in, uh, el eligible park parking signs. This legislation will resolve a frustration for residents that receive a parking ticket when there is illegible signage. When a parking sign is illegible, people don't have notice that a restriction is in effect but can still receive a ticket. It is within the finance department's discretion to dismiss these tickets, but they're not required to do so. And many people don't know that they might be able to get their ticket dismissed for, for illegible signs, and the standards for dismissal can be unclear. There should also be more pressure on, on DOT to maintain parking signs. This speaks to greater problems within DOT. It takes too long for studies to be completed, 
for traffic lights to be installed and other traffic conduct measures to be in place, and just maintain your signs. So I want to thank uh, the speaker, his staff, my office, and everyone that helped make this bill possible. I ask my colleagues to vote aye, and with that, I vote aye on all. Ulrich. Aye on all. Valone. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, two of our Two of the street renamings for champions in the district, both on the east end and the west end, and you know them both. Uh, Joe Feminia was in College Point uh, and did everything in College Point on Community Board 7, and Howard Hader was in Community Board 11, and his wife continues, Christine Hader, in Community Board 11. Uh, and the third is, is Maddie Scherzian, who was all of 17, who was crossing the street, Utopia Parkway, just uh, at St. Francis Prep. She went to St. Mel's, all of Whitestone, held candlelight vigil for her and her family, and we cried together for Maddie. So for Maddie's family, forever know that her light will always shine on that corner and be a reminder for all of us the perils as we cross our intersections in New York City and how difficult they are and how much work we still need to do to make it safe for all of us. So with that, I thank my fellow uh, council members. Um, God bless each one of you, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Jaeger. May I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, just very briefly, I'm grateful to uh, Mr. Speaker and uh, those here who have taken the time today, um, either here in the chamber or in other ways, to uh, remember, um, memorialize uh, Councilman James Davis. Uh, he was a friend of mine. Uh, those here who know him uh, know that he loved life. He loved his community, he loved people, he loved friends, he loved his public service very, very much. Um, and 16 years ago today, he was taken from us, and I remember that day, I was actually on the way here uh, to City Hall, just a few blocks away, when police cars started circling the blocks, and uh, there was a thought that there was another shooter uh, that they were still looking for at that time. Um, he was an incredible human being. He dedicated his life to bringing people together and uh, he didn't make it on his first try to get to uh, elected office, but he kept on trying until he got there. And once here, he did an incredible job, and he was very proud of his work, and I was too, and I'm grateful for that. Um, I vote aye on all, with the exception of intro 1472 and 1457, on which I vote no, and I abstain on 1631 and intro 570. And very briefly, with regard to 570, I'm a co-sponsor of this bill. Uh, the reason I abstain is because uh, ver the original version that was introduced here in the council was a good version. The item that we are voting on today is also a good version, but not as good as the original version. It um, gives a protection to the Department of Transportation that I don't think it deserves. Um, and it takes away a protection from uh, the people in disputing tickets when the sign is not legible. And I understand why the bill needed to be amended in order to pass it and to have the administration be amenable to it. Uh, but And nonetheless, I, I will be abstaining, but I will not remove my name because it is fundamentally a good idea. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye on all. Speaker Johnson. Take one moment to tally the votes. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 1457A, which was adopted by a vote of 37 affirmative, seven negative, and three abstentions. And intro 1472B, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 570A, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. 
and intro 1631, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. Oops. The revised land use call up vote is 47 in the affirmative and zero negative. Thank you. Introduction and reading of bills. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. Are there any members who wish to speak on today's resolutions? Uh, Madam Majority, there are all bills have been referred to committee as indicated on the agenda. Okay. I will now read today's resolutions into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on any of these resolutions should register their vote with the clerk at the dais. I'll begin with resolution 740. Resolution calling upon the New York City Administration for Children's Services to implement a policy finding that a person's mere possession or use of marijuana does not by itself create an imminent risk of harm to a child, warranting the child's removal. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions. The ayes have it. Resolution 746, resolution calling on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation requiring the New York State Department of Health to create clear and fair regulations for hospitals on drug testing those who are pregnant or giving birth, including informing patients of their rights before any discussion of drug use or drug testing. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions. The ayes have it. Resolution 897A, an amended resolution calling on Congress to pass and the president to sign the Never Forget the Heroes, the James Adroga, Ray Pfeiffer, and Luis Alvarez permanent authorization of the September 11th Victim Compensation Fund Act, H.R. 1327, S546, which would fully finance and extend authorization for the September 11th Victim Compensation Fund until fiscal year 2092. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions. The ayes have it, and I certainly applaud Speaker Corey Johnson for his continuous voice and making sure that this is something that continues to be a part of the national conversation and debate and we have seen success today. Thank you so much for your leadership. We will now move into general discussion and we will bring on council members King followed by Rivera and Levin. Good afternoon, I rise every one day just to bring awareness to two bills that I'm introducing today. One is intro 1639. Recently, I had a senior who was 103 years old, denied and our Medicaid service was taken away, as well as not being able to travel around the city of New York. This bill that I'm introducing today is on our calendar says 100 years, but legislation is supposed to be 80 years of age. So any one senior in the city of New York who's over 80 years of age will be able to travel through the city of New York, whether it's ferry service, bus service, train service, at no cost because they've earned it as a senior and a centurion in the city of New York. Secondly, the next resolution that I'm introducing today, I'm asking you all for your support. We do know that the Department of Education has made a mockery of special education and not getting it right. We've had so many lawsuits, Tish James has filed so many lawsuits right now, it's about making sure that our children who are being serviced by a special education systems get educated and their families get the services they need. Since over the last five decades, the DOE has not been making, making right by this promise to service those families. I'm asking for the state and the governor to sign a resolution calling on the transference of special education from out of the Department of Education and the Department of Mental Health and Services who are already providing at least 80% of the services to these families. I ask you to join on this fight and this conversation to make sure our children and our families serving with autism and special needs get service. Thank you and have a blessed week. Thank you, Council Member King. Council Member Levin. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I want to take this quick opportunity to acknowledge uh, our wonderful interns that are in, uh, in our office this year. And I have to bring this up on my phone. Um, I apologize to everybody. Um, here we go. It's uh, 
I think that they're still upstairs. Um, Kyla Brathwaite, uh, Tayaba, um, uh, Lysol Jameson, Maddie Rosen, Lana K. Poole, uh, Baruch Frankel, um, uh, and Lyle, at, oh, I'm sorry, that was, I got Lyle already. Um, and so I just want to thank them all for their incredible uh, work this summer. They, I hope that they're having a great experience. Um, and they've, they've really uh, added um, uh, a wonderful aspect to the office. And so I want to uh, just acknowledge their great work and thank them very much for uh, their partnership this year. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the majority leader. Thank you, and I just want to close by also recognizing my interns as well. Uh, oh, Councilmember Rose. Thank you. Thank you, Madam yes. Majority Leader. Um, I, I wanted to say that I, I just found out that a, um, I want to thank Carlos Menchaca and all of the uh, Transportation Committee members who are trying to make pedestrian and bicycles, um, bicyclists safer um, I just found out that a 17-year-old um, was, uh, there was a crash in my district and uh, a 17-year-old bicycle rider just died. Um, I, I also wanted to acknowledge a happy occasion. My uh, communications director is celebrating his birthday and I wanted to say happy birthday, Vincent Gragnani. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member, and happy birthday. Council Member Chin. Thank you. Um, I wanted to uh, talk about intro 1633, um, a bill focused on relocating tenants displaced by a vacay order, uh, an issue that I have been working on closely in my district. Far too often, tenants who have experienced the trauma of evacuating their homes due to their landlord's negligence also have to deal with the additional burden of being temporarily placed in a neighborhood away from their families, schools, hospital, and uh, all kinds of services. My bill will require HPD to provide temporary housing for tenants in their community district or immediately adjacent community district. Our city needs to take all measures necessary to minimize disruption to tenants displaced by a vacay order. This is one way we can break the cycle that forces too many tenants into shelter system, and I urge all my colleagues to join me on this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Chin. And I also want to acknowledge my interns that are here, uh, Pavitra Ramsharan, Alicia Ahmed, Hope Brown, and Ayana Henry. Uh, it's so dynamic to have you all here today. I see you all waving. I'm just so happy to have all of this new talent in my office. And I also wanted to uh, acknowledge my predecessor, uh, the late, great James E. Davis, who is certainly a political giant and inspired many, many other elected officials to run for office. He was a true champion. He was a minister, a police officer, a champion, and a fighter, and stood up very strongly around issues around gun violence. And it's so tragic that his life would be taken away right here in the council chamber. So I always view and see the council chambers as sacred space and in the space and place of protest and rally, we always have to recognize, particularly in this space, that this is certainly something that we all think about and think about his legacy and how his life was so tragically taken from each and every one of us. And I just want to salute my members of the BLAC caucus, uh, Adonis Rodriguez uh, and Council Member Miller um, for their incredible work around the tragic incident of Eric Garner and all of the testimony, the, the hours in courtrooms, the press conferences, the rallies, it, it certainly becomes, as elected officials, increasingly more difficult after the aftermath of these tragic shootings to often go back and have to tell our communities to wait for the investigation. It's getting harder and harder to keep the peace, to keep people calm by telling them to wait for an investigation that time after time we get the same result. So I certainly applaud all of my colleagues for continuing this fight. This is something that is not over and something that we must continue to fight for. So I thank all of you here today. Continue as best as you can to enjoy 
your summer, and I know with all of the rampant climate changes from a heat wave to uh, electrical outages to flooding, we are seeing the true results of climate change and what the impact is on our community. So I certainly want to thank everyone uh, for all of their work that they've done with legislation and trying to do our part to turn around a very difficult time. I'll now turn it over to Councilmember Levin and followed by Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I appreciate the courtesy. I was remiss. I need to acknowledge Tanya Cyrus, who uh, policy, senior policy analyst to the General Welfare Committee. The Speaker acknowledged her before. Uh, Tanya has been an amazing partner uh, with the General Welfare Committee, putting in countless hours on behalf of New Yorkers, um, the New Yorkers most in need, uh, uh, making sure that uh, children uh, affected by uh, ACS and, uh, and the Department of Homeless Services are getting the services that they need, um, advancing uh, important legislation, uh, and, and really looking out uh, for, for, for everybody in New York City, uh, particularly those most in need. And so I want to just thank Tanya um, for all the great work that she has done uh, in gratitude and to wish her well on the other side of City Hall uh, with City Legislative Affairs. And I know that uh, our loss will be uh, the administration's gain, but we look forward to continuing to work with her. And I know that with her as part of the administration, um, uh, this city will continue to, 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 to uh, strive to do better on behalf of all New Yorkers. So thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Levin. Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, the stated meeting of July 23rd, 2019 is hereby adjourned. <laughs>